Hello, today I'm going to talk about four new features that I'm working on related to the electric eel wheel. Now there's way more features in this that I'm actually working on, but uh, these are four of the more interesting ones and I thought that you know I'd sort of give you the first couple are sort of relatively small improvements on the existing eel wheel and then uh, the latter two are major new projects that I'm working on uh, that are, you, as you'll see, they're related. They're kind of more exciting, so definitely stick around until those last two. The first is actually the most mundane, so we'll go through this one quickly, but um, a lot of people will know that the motors on the electric eel wheel are something that you uh, want to replace once in a while. Here's one of the motors. Uh, normally, there'd be a pulley on the end, uh, but uh, basically before we were soldering the wires directly um, to these terminals and uh, in the future we're definitely going to be using these uh, clips that will connect to the motor that way they're a little more secure a little more durable and it also makes changing out the motors even more easy than it is today which requires undoing a screw so that's just uh, an example of one small improvement i'm doing uh, to future electric eel wheels next up on ravelry there was a suggestion that maybe we could add a, a bottom panel to the electric eel wheel. And I've kind of avoided that for, for cost reasons in the future. Um, I also didn't want to limit the repairability and make it sort of a pain to get off the, the bottom cover. But um, if I'm willing to accept the additional cost, there was a suggestion of uh, using uh, magnets. So I, I'm just using these pieces of wood as an example. I haven't actually uh, cut an electric eel wheel bottom cover to test this. I'll have to check heat and things like that. But um, I just did an example, you know, just these uh, magnets and it just sort of snips and snaps into place. And where did it go? If you actually had an eel wheel case, it would actually sit recessed in the bottom here so um, the case would sort of go in there and then click in with the magnets if I get the magnets again um, you can kind of see that it really does you know I mean it's not going to fall off but it's definitely um, easy to get off and on so it's a really clever solution I wish I could remember I'm gonna go look it up on Ravelry and I'll put the user who suggested this, um, their name in the comments, because it's a really clever idea and, and I like it a lot now that I'm sort of experimenting. I'll definitely um, create some laser files where I create a case that can kind of um, be recessed into the bottom of this guy. And you'll also notice that um, in the future I'm putting these square posts in the bottom. Um, so that'll be a good spot to put the, uh, to attach the magnets to. So, um, oh, I, hey, here's a bonus. This is a, a new type of wood I'm experimenting with. I don't know if this will go anywhere, but um, it's definitely gets rid of uh, the splintering issue. Uh, it's a little bit lighter uh, look wise and feel wise, but it's still really strong. So, um, you know, we're always experimenting with uh, new things here and, and trying to improve and uh, you know, just re-engineer how electric spinning wheels work. Okay, now we're getting into some more of the uh, interesting um, major new features. So this is an auto flyer that I've been working on and basically the idea is that today you spin and then you have to stop the wheel and you move the hook a little bit. Um, if you could have um, a way of having these hooks move automatically, that would be a pretty awesome uh, new feature. Uh, the, the, the problem is that, you know, if you were to do some kind of mechanical system, I'd probably need a new flyer, um, new bobbins, and you're not going to get things designed as cheaply if you try to create a purely mechanical system. So um, what I sort of decided on trying at least early on is I'll put, um, you know, a small battery on the flyer and a small circuit board and a, a motor which you can um, kind of see here in this uh, prototype there's a motor down there uh, and the idea is with these electronics you could have sort of move the hook back and forth and it doesn't use much power I'm sort of realizing because 
really you don't need the hook to move continuously, which would use a lot of power, but you can just move the hook, you know, an inch or two, or a fraction of an inch, and then, you know, wait 30 seconds, and then maybe new move it another half inch, and wait 30 seconds and move it a half an inch, and something like that you can do um, without much power. So um, today I don't have the uh, circuit board figured out because I know how to do that. That's, that's sort of an easier portion here. I was just trying to figure out the mechanical system. And just to sort of show you, I've gone through many different prototypes. Um, this one uses a gear uh, motor. Uh, this is like an earlier version with a pulley system. Uh, this is a um, uh, another gear version and uh, there was um, there was another one. Where did that one go? A anyways, um, several prototypes to try to come up with a mechanical system just to get the mo hook to move um, back and forth. And this is sort of what I've got working right now. And this is uh, my favorite one, but it's uh, basically a pulley system. And then you've got a threaded rod, and then that threaded rod drives this hook back and forth. Uh, so let me just sort of demonstrate how this works. Again, I don't have the electronics to um, move it, but I do have the motor just hooked up to a, a standard power supply here. And that sort of shows you, you know, I mean, what you'd end up doing is you'd, you'd run it and then you'd turn it off. You'd probably spin for a minute or something. And then the motor would turn back on and it would do that. Another, you know, every minute or so. And then what happens is... Um, after many minutes of spinning, you'd eventually reach the end, and it can detect when it reaches the end, and then uh, this would all be done with the uh, electronics on the board, but for now I'm just sort of switching uh, the wires here, and then it would go back the other way. So that's the basic premise, and I'm pretty happy with this mechanical system. It's definitely something I have to iterate on. Um, to get it sort of to a final working solution. But um, at this stage, I'm, I'm pretty confident that I can get something like this working. I do want to look at a, a little, a few other things that would be a pretty dramatic change using warm gears, but um, this sort of design is, is at least one thing that seems like it could work. So the next big question is, can I add all of the electronics and the power and stuff and not uh, make the flyer way too much. So that's the next thing I'm going to be working on here. Um, but sort of the mechanical part seems like a, a feasible thing to do at this point. Okay, so this is the last project I'm going to be talking about. And this is the very first prototype of this. So um, this one's very rough. You can see I just um, cut a hole in here because I couldn't get access to the uh, 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 pulley very easily. But um, I'm, you know, for a first prototype, I mean, it's definitely not um, really functional at this point uh, yet. Uh, but uh, I sort of wanted to show people, you know, approximately the size. You know, it, it fits in the palm of your hand. It's a miniature version of the electric eel wheel. Uh, the uh, the goal is to, you know, keep it in the. I really haven't figured out exactly how much it'll cost yet, but. Hopefully, we'd sell it for, you know, like the $30 to $60 range. So um, it's definitely not meant as um, a competitor to the electric eel wheel. It's kind of, you know, something to fun to, you know, experiment with or try at shows and things like that. Um, maybe if you're teaching people. Basically, if I can do make spinning on this better than a drop spindle, then um, I will have succeeded because it's, you know, it's, it's just sort of not meant as a, a full-blown spinning wheel, but a way of trying out spinning and seeing if you like it. Uh, but uh, here I can turn it on. So, um, yeah, there's lots of things I need to do to sort of improve on this guy in the future, but I uh, thought I'd show you where I'm at right now. Um, one thing I'm really not sure about is... Um, whether I need to uh, have a variable speed control or not. That, that would, you know, if I don't need to have variable speed on this guy, that would reduce the uh, cost um, quite a bit. Uh, I'd pick just sort of a, a slowish speed. 
and and have that be the only one but maybe i need to put a speed control on there i don't know it's something that i'm definitely going to have to play around with some more and uh, build more prototypes and sort of continue engineering on this one but anyways those were the uh four major or four projects i wanted to show you that i've been working on recently and uh, you know if you've got feedback on any of them i'd really appreciate it uh always looking for ideas or you know just commentary on what you think works or or doesn't work with uh, these things so thanks for watching